Okay guys, I'm getting ready to start on one of my personal projects here for myself. What I've got are two of my antique cast iron oil lamps. These are a couple that I have found that I have picked up and they're both missing the original caps. Now one of them did come with this cap right here. This, I'm pretty sure this is just a gas cap off of like an old Briggs and Stratton engine. All right, and that was on this guy right here. So it's apparently it's the same size thread as what these these were manufactured with. But of course, I do not like the uh, you know the old stamped metal gas cap on there. So I'd like to machine a couple of caps that that uh, just fit a little nicer, maybe look a little nicer than that than a gas cap. Okay. This one still has the original handle on it. The smaller one here. It did not come with the handle nor, nor the uh, cap for it as well. This one's the number two, and I believe this one here was the number one. So they made these in different sizes. So yeah, this is the number one furnace lamp. Very cool. I love my, I love all of my old antique oil lamps, and I enjoy using them as well. I don't these I don't get just to sit around the shelf and look cool. I actually put uh, tiki citronella oil in these things and burn them outside, you know, when I'm doing my cooking and whenever we're camping. Helps keep the mosquitoes away and bugs and things like that. So anyway, like I said, we're going to build a couple of caps. So I've, I've gone ahead and machined one because I wanted to go ahead and do some testing and some proving and go ahead and get one of these made. This one ended up a little bit taller than what I should have made it, but it still works. It still will work and, and fine. Okay. So I'll show you. Fits that one nicely. And it actually fits this other one too. Move that one, I'll show you. Fits that one too. So like I said, I don't know what the original caps look like because I haven't seen one, but I'm just uh, making one, you know, my own design. Just a very simple design a knurled surface on there so that it's easily, you know, you can easily grab it and spin it. And then we have the threads, the proper threads machined in there to a shoulder. And I just did a couple of grooves because they always, they always look pretty cool when you do that in the, in the knurls there. Okay. So like I said, that one will work, but we're going to go ahead and make one more. I've got this piece of ductile iron that I, that I bought to do this job. Just, it was just a six inch piece that I bought from McMaster just specifically for this job right there. So I've got some new inserts. I bought these specifically to do this job. And of course I'll have them in, if I ever have another uh, thread profile to machine like this. This is the 16ER6RD. So it is a round, round profile, round threading profile there for a six pitch thread. Also got the new Tungle Loy three quarter inch left-handed boring bar to be able to use these inserts on and be able to go in there, come up to the shoulder and thread from the inside out. So I'll show you the, the tool and the insert a little bit closer up here in just a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up and I will show you machining the second one out of, out of this piece of ductile. So we'll have a total of uh, two caps there in the end. I've got a new threading bar that we are adding to the uh, threading arsenal. This one is a tungle loy. Now this is a left-handed threading bar which is great for getting into a uh, inside of a board X toe shoulder and threading from the inside out in the uh, reverse direction there. I did not have one, so I wanted to go ahead and add one, as well as a new threading insert here that is specifically made for the application that I have. I want to cut a six pitch round thread and Tungaloy had these inserts right there. So I got a pack of those, a pack of five. And these will be these will be awesome to uh, do you 16 ER 6 RD, okay? That'll be this is going to be nice having this versus uh, setting a piece of high speed tool and grinding it to the right profile. So this is going to work out really good. So this this operation works well if you have this is a representation of what I'm going to be machining right there. It's not going to look like that, but it's going to be similar, especially with the threads inside. So if you need to thread up to a tight shoulder, such as this right here, you can set up a left-handed bar with the proper right-handed insert 
and come into the shoulder very close, have you an undercut there and thread from the inside out like that. Uh, much easier and uh, safer operation than having to come in that short little tiny distance and worry about crashing into the shoulder right there. So this will be a nice setup to have. Uh, this bar also will work with your uh, traditional, you know, V-style inserts like this guy right here, a 16 ER. You can use that just the same on this bar right there. So looking forward to having this and I'm gonna be making up a couple of these. It's not gonna look exactly like this, but the internal threads will be the same. So we'll be using these inserts in this bar to get it done. All right, we've got the uh, knurling tool set up. Looks like it's gonna be cutting a pretty good pattern on there. I am using a, a coarse knurl pattern. That's the one that I always like and use right there. So we'll probably be going you know, anywhere between 60, 80, maybe even 100,000 deep. All I do is just uh, make a pass, look at it, and then I'll reverse the feed rod the other direction. So we'll feed in and then feed back out. Just keep going back and forth until we get the knurl kind of looking the way we want. Uh, nothing specific, just try to make it look pretty decent is all. So we've already got everything ready to go. I'm just going to engage it and let it run it across there. Every now and then I'll just stop it. You don't have to stop the feed or anything. I just stop it and hit the foot brake and look at it. And that pattern is uh, turning out very nice right there. So I have not calculated the actual, the proper diameter according to the, uh, you know, the number of knurling teeth on those rollers there. I usually just kind of wing it and uh, skin it and try it and see what kind of pattern it cuts. That's the reason why I left that diameter a little bit large so that I could skin it if I need to. I noticed on the first one I made, the pattern didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to, but it's not that critical. I'm not, I'm just making this for myself, you know? So I'm just, looking down this tool right here and just visually watching it getting up close to that shoulder and, I'm, and what I'll do is just stop it. I'm just gonna stop it right there. And you can see the neural pattern looking really nice. I've got a little zero set here on a dial indicator. I'm just gonna reach over here, reverse the feed rod and engage it again, go back the other way. I'm gonna go ahead and feed it in another 10 or so on the cross slide. Yeah, it's looking good. Much better than that first one. Now you can see some of the, uh, what looks like flakes and chips on there. That's just that ductile iron. That's just the nature of the, the material when you're trying to knurl it, it likes to try to chip out of there. So you just gotta be careful about how deep you go because it, it will just start tearing it out of there and breaking out. That's probably going to be all we need. We'll, we'll just let it finish out this, this, uh, this pass. That is uh, 65 thousandths deep on the cross slide here. There we go. Yeah, that looks nice. It's got a nice grip to it there. And what I can do is just take my file brush here, use the file card just kind of brush it with that right there and knock those flakes off and that, that is looking good and you can take it deeper than that you can actually make it more coarse by using instead of using the feed rod you can use the lead screw you know and engage it on a like a thread pitch a very coarse thread and open that diamond pattern up even more and the deeper you go the more it forms that material into a peak it just don't do it that well on ductile iron I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna leave that right where it's at. I'm, I'm happy with the way that neural pattern looks there.
I'm going to use a spot and drill and uh, drill it a half inch deep and uh, just got to, I'm going to just open it up, probably use a couple of end mills maybe to open it up because we want a flat bottom down in there. our micro 100 carbide bore and bar to get this board to size. I've already got a depth established with an indicator. This is an old carbide insert, insert bar that we've had for years and the way this thing is profiled it actually works pretty good for getting in there and making a, a light undercut at the shoulder for something like this right there. So this is what I'm going to be doing, just a, a half inch shank, got it mounted in one of those boring bar sleeves there. And that's what we're going to do is uh, just machine an undercut in that back corner there enough to relieve the thread where we can go in there with our threading bar and our tool you know, and then be able to feed from the inside out and not be cutting into material each time. What I'm gonna do on the, the diameter is, I know what diameter we got it at now. I wanna take it to about one inch, 515 thousandths in diameter. I'm not gonna worry about measuring it. I'm just going off of what I know that our bore is and I'm gonna watch my dial. So there's our touch off. I'm gonna set a zero right there. Just opening it up wide enough there. I know the tool is going to clear. Go back to the end. So that's 50 thousandths. All right, we're almost done. We're getting down to our threading now. So we've got our threading bar mounted up to the tool. I got to go in there and set our, uh, our stops there. We'll use an indicator here on our depth end. I'll come to that zero every time, and that'll change just a little bit as I, I'm gonna feed it in this way just because it's already set up on the proper angle. I'm gonna feed it in that way because we're not taking a lot of metal out of this. It's gonna work good. So I always like using another mag base indicator. We're gonna use this guy right here on the uh, cross slide and I'll always set this up and adjust it against the back of the compound right there, like this right there, I'll set a zero. The pro one of the problems I always have with this Victor, and I haven't, dig I haven't dug into this to find out why it does that, but whenever you're doing threading ops and you're backing out and going forward and back, this dial, even though it's got a lot of friction to it, this dial never seems to stay in the same location. I don't know why it changes. It'll, every pass, it'll be a few thousandths off and it just keeps moving on you. So easiest thing to do for me is I stick this magnetic backed indicator right there and set a zero and that all that never fails me right there as long as you don't bump it or move it this always lines me up back on zero all right we're ready to start threading now always got to remember <laughs> when we're doing it on that side you got to go run your spindle in reverse direction there we've already got a cross slide set to a zero and I have a z-axis zero set on the dial indicator so I just know where to run that bar into I'm going to run this back into my zero there. I'm just going to dial in, let's dial in three on the cross slide. I'm sorry, the compound. And let me get my bearing straight. On the threading dial, we should be able to hit 
any of the eight lines and line up. We're cutting a six pitch here. Okay, so that's going to be our scratch pass right there. So we're going to go ahead and take our thread pitch gauge and I'm going to check it just to be sure. And we are. That is on a six pitch right there. So now we're just going to go to town on it. See, I just went the wrong way, so stop it. The only way for me to uh, engage this in the reverse rotation is to use the handle on the right side of the carriage. So I just know that every time I turn on, I got to use my right hand to reach over here and engage this to uh, turn the machine on properly. Go into our zero there, zero on our cross slide. We'll go ahead and feed it in 10 thousandths on the compound. Just like that, just as easy as that. Back it into me. Back to our cross slide zero and let's go another 10 thousandths. looking good all right we'll just keep working it All right, we'll go ahead and show you the test fit here. I believe I've got it right where I need. We have dialed in 55 thousandths. This one's screwing in nicely. Go ahead and test fit the other one. This one's got a little bit rougher thread than the first one, but it screws on just the same. So it's got the same fit there which is going to be good. That is all we need. Perfect. I'll use a little bit of emery to uh, polish this out, make sure there's no sharp burrs left in there. And I believe I'm not going to cut any grooves on the OD of this. This neural turned out so nice that I'm just going to leave it just like it is. That's the pattern that I really like. So, but from here, I'm going to, instead of parting it all the way up to the middle, we're going to go to the hide mech and clamp it in there because you can clamp short pieces and just bandsaw cut this off. And we'll come back to the lathe here, face it, and chamfer it. And that'll be done. Just looking at the one I just cut there and looking at the one on the back just trying to make them about as even as I can get that looks pretty good all right there's our cap that we just made that one turned out great I actually like it a lot better than this first one that I made right here just ended up being too big but let's go ahead and show you the fit on the uh, lanterns here that's nice I like that I know it looks kind of simple I'm sure the original caps probably looked a little bit more elegant than that. Probably had a completely different shape to it. Maybe maybe more like a top hat. I have no idea because I've never seen 
what the original caps look like. But this right here is gonna work for my needs. It's nice knowing that I just made it myself. And I, I like the way it looks a lot better than this, uh, this old gas cap right here. Let's try it over here on the number one lamp. Get it started straight, there we go. It's actually got a nice fit on there too. This is the proper height I need for, for that one so it'll clear the handle properly. All right, there we go. I like it so much, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make another one. I'll do that off camera, of course. I've got a little bit of this ductile left. I have just enough. I can go in here and machine another one of these. And uh, so that way I've got two of them to match. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, get another one made up. And then this guy right here, I'll just hold on to this one and keep it over here on my on my little display shelf. And I'll just have another cap for, if I end up finding another one of these and picking one up, that doesn't have a cap, of course. I'll have a cap that I know that it can that it would fit. All right, as I mentioned, I made up a second one there. So now we have two that are identical in size, three quarter thick. Knurls look the same, thread pitch is all the same. Uh, only difference in the inside there, this is the first one I did, you saw me do this one. Those lines on that face is actually uh, from chips getting hung up between the threading bar and the face there and just scratched it. And I didn't think to go in and face that out again before I took it out of the machine. This one, it did the same thing. It had a little scratch in there, so I just went in there with the carbide bar and just faced it out five thousandths to clean that scratch up. Other than that, they are identical, and they look good. I'm real happy with the way the knurling came out. That is always a very beautiful knurl, in my opinion, is the, is the coarse uh, diamond pattern like that. So, we'll go ahead and put them on there. You have to make sure they start straight. And then the one that I just made off camera. Again, you gotta get it started straight. Perfect. I like the way they look. They look great. What I may do is uh, I might cut some cork gasketing to go up on the inside just to kind of help seal any kind of splashing around uh, from leaking down through there. And of course this one is missing the, uh, the wire handle like that's on the number one here. So at some point I may see about making up another handle like this guy right here and attach it to the number two. That might be a pretty cool you know, project to try to do. Have to make up a wooden handle like that and see if we can do that. I don't know. I'm probably gonna soak them in evaporust to kind of, especially this one's got a lot of, you know, somebody probably wire brushed wire brush this at some point in its life 
and uh, now it's just flash rusted over. So I may soak them and just spray paint them black. The caps, what I may do with those is just use that, that Oxfo cold bluing and just uh, darken them up with that cold blue. That might be what we do with that. That'll probably look pretty cool. So anyway, that little personal project is done. I'm glad that I can get these guys in uh, working order now. I've actually been um, buying different felt, not, not felt, I'm sorry, wicks to uh, put new wicks in all my, my lanterns, my lamps. So I've got some half inch and some three quarter. This one looks like it'll take the half inch and I think this one might be the uh, three quarter there. But I just buy the 100% cotton rope off of Amazon and use that and it works perfect. So get them cleaned up, painted, put some new wicks in them and these guys are gonna be ready to use. So that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this fun little personal project and we'll see you on the next one.